Hey guys, Andy here, and today on Andy Talks Japandi, I'm going to be talking to you about five ways I would do college differently on the GI Bill if I could go back in time. And so just for a little bit of context, I got out of the U.S. Navy on September 24th, 2015, which was a little over six years ago now. I had already been accepted into Western Michigan University in Kalamazoo when I was still active duty, but the fall semester had already started by the time I got out. So I stayed with my parents for three months until I got my apartment right before starting the following semester in 2016. And not gonna lie, it was rough for me at first because at that point I just turned 30 and went into college three months after I got out thinking that I was basically just gonna be the old fuck and in most cases I was. Hearing stories about 9-11 and how most kids weren't even born when it happened made me feel old as fuck, let me tell you what. So even though I'm an introvert, I find most college kids these days are very open to being friends with somebody older than them and with a way different life experience. But like with anywhere, you do get shitbirds who need a few more years to grow up, but don't let them ruin your college experience. Now I'm gonna be graduating next summer and turning 36 at the end of the year. Ooh, my old bones are aching just saying that. And if I had to do the whole thing over again, I would, number one, do research on not just the college, but the whole area. It's hard to get a full beat on a place without physically being there, so don't commit until you've toured the campus and driven around town. The first two colleges I went to were in Kalamazoo, Michigan, which were Western Michigan, like I said before, as well as Kalamazoo Valley Community College. And unless you have family in the area, and aside from going up to Grand Rapids for the weekends, there's not a whole lot to do there, really. Not to mention the traffic could get unbearable at times. And the drivers are the usual Michigan flavor of mega crazy. If you've driven to Michigan, you know. Also, grab some Culver's for you, boy. So number two, give yourself time to readjust to things. I had a lot of anxiety and depression problems rear their ugly heads when I went from being four deployed to a college degree seeking student in America. Although they would have surfaced eventually, my problems that is, if I had better resources to deal with them, then I would not have failed many courses initially and wasted my GI Bill. Having a support network of friends, family, therapists, and so on is essential, especially in the beginning when you're adjusting. Now, based on the people that I've talked to who have gotten out, I find that the married folk have a much easier time readjusting to things than the single folk, but your mileage may vary. All right, and number thirty. Take a break from college if you need to. If you're going through some shit and it's just not getting any better, don't try to suck it up and carry on. Taking a gap year when shit hit the fan was honestly the best thing I've done. I lived with my folks for a while and it was great to spend some time with them. As everyone gets older, you don't always have that luxury. And taking time away from college also allowed me to regroup and come back into college with a clear mind and goals rather than, well, this is my college and major, I guess. Number Boa. Don't spend money like you did when you were in. I burned through my $12,000 of savings in a few months because I thought I could live off of just the GI Bill. So I would just buy stuff and not worry about it. But I didn't account for not getting my first full check until three months into college. That, along with buying a car and moving expenses, whittled down my savings quickly. Also, don't be too proud to work a job just because you think it's beneath you. I eventually started working at McDonald's on the weekends to help cover expenses, but at that point my savings was completely gone and I was just barely keeping my head above water. And the last one, number five. Don't limit yourself to just going to colleges in the states where your family lives or even just America in general. When I was in my gap year, I contacted an old shipmate of mine who was going to school in Japan. I didn't even know that you could do that on the GI Bill. but. After some research and a recommendation from my friend and fellow veteran, Jim, of the Kid Short Yukon channel, I decided on Lakeland University, Japan, rehab my GPA at the community college, and I arrived right before the country lockdown. Plus, the cost of living is generally lower abroad than stateside, so you aren't stressing about bills as much. And since American holidays aren't observed here, I don't get my GI Bill dinged since school is still in session. The longest break period I get, though, is a month-long break in between semesters. And yes, unfortunately, those are unpaid. So yeah, those were five ways I would do college on the GI Bill differently if I could go back in time. And if you could go back in time and redo college, what would you do? Whether you were on the GI Bill or not, let me know in the comments down below in the boopity boops.